So over the course of the next few tutorials, we're going to be talking about Kp, the equilibrium constant. We well, were probably like, well, hang on a minute, Rich. We've just talked about Kc being the equilibrium constant. Well, Kc was the equilibrium constant with respect to concentration. And you've probably guessed that Kp is the equilibrium constant with respect to pressure. So we're only dealing with gases. It's just another way of looking at where the position of the equilibrium lies with respect to the reactants and the products. OK, so what's our kind of definition? What's our cast iron definition of Kp? Well, Kp describes the state of equilibrium with respect to the partial pressures exerted by the reactants and products. And that's denoted by a small p. Now, as I just mentioned, this is for gases only. OK, so we're only looking at homogeneous equilibria with gases only in. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make a few assumptions like we did for Kc. So there's a few things you make sure you need to know before you actually get started with this. And that's make sure you know what a dynamic equilibrium is and you have an understanding of that. What Le Chatelier's principle is, of course, uh, and your definition for that. And of course, Kc. Now, if you understand Kc, you'll understand what goes on with Kp. So let's go take a look another look at this kind of definition that we've got here. So with respect to the partial pressures exerted by the reactants and products, well, what the hell do we mean by partial pressures? I always find it's useful to take a look at a diagram for this. OK, so what are partial pressures? So what I'm doing here is I'm just putting together a closed system. It's just going to draw a closed vessel. And what I'm doing is adding different gases to that closed system four different gases to be precise. So the black dots represent one gas, the blue dots, another, the red dots, another, let's say products now, and of course, green dots for a fourth and final gas. Now, all these gases, as they bump off the sides, are going to exert a pressure. Now, not all of these pressures are equal. Some gases will exert more pressure than others, some gases will exert less pressure than others. But what we do get is a total pressure. So let's say that our total pressure exerted by all of these gases together is 500 atmospheres. What the partial pressures do is give us an idea of how much pressure is exerted by each individual gas. So the sum of the partial pressures equals the total pressure. And what we can also say is that the greater the number of moles of a gas, the greater its partial pressure. And that makes sense because the more moles of something you have within a closed system, the more pressure it's going to exert on the walls. So if we just take our four different gases here as A, B, C and D, OK, the four different colours, what we can say is that the partial pressure of A plus that of B plus that of C plus that of D gives us a total pressure of 500 atmospheres. OK, so as we just said, the sum of the partial pressures exerted by each gas equals the total pressure in a system. So the question is, how do we go and put that in an expression? What is the expression for Kp? Well, it's very, very similar to that for Kc. So let's take a standard equilibrium whereby we have all gases and we got A moles of A, B moles of B, C moles of C and D moles of D. As I just mentioned, these translate directly into the Kp expression, just like the values for concentration go into the uh, expression for Kc. OK, so it looks exactly the same. So Kp equals the partial pressure of C to the power C, so the power of its number of moles, times the partial pressure of D to its power of its number of moles, all over our reactants. So the partial pressure of A to the power of its number of moles, multiplied by B to the power of its number of moles. So it looks exactly the same as Kc. What I really want to point out here, though, is that these brackets are rounded. We do not use square brackets. Square brackets 
are kept for concentration because they denote concentration. So if you use square brackets here, you're going to lose marks in an exam question. So it's really important you just use rounded brackets here and that uh, and the little p denotes partial pressure. OK, so you, that's the big difference between the KC and KP expressions. Otherwise, they're set up in exactly the same way. So let's take a look at a quick example of what I mean. So let's take two sulfur dioxide reacting with oxygen to give two sulfur trioxide. We've seen this one before. Well, how do we set up Kp for this? Well, what we have is the partial pressure of sulfur trioxide, our, our product, squared, okay, or to the power two because there's two moles of that, all over the partial pressure of sulfur dioxide, squared, again, because there's two moles of that in our equation, multiplied by the partial pressure of oxygen, okay? So that's how we set up Kp. It is exactly the same as Kc. So overall, what we've got is a definition. It's the state of equilibrium with respect to the partial pressures exerted by the reactants and products, okay? So we're only looking at the gases in here. What are partial pressures? Well, it's the individual pressures at each of the gases uh, exerts on the uh, inside of that vessel. The greater the number of moles of a gas, the greater its partial pressure. And a really important uh, piece of information that the total partial pressures, okay, all the, the, all the partial pressures added up together, basically equal the total pressure. Really important for later on that. Our expression basically is exactly the same as Kc, the, the way we say set it up. But what we need to do is put our notation for partial pressures, which is small p, and we use round brackets, not square brackets, okay? And again, we raise each of these to the power of the number of moles in the equilibrium, okay? So that's how we set up Kp. Those are what partial pressures are. In the next couple of tutorials, we'll talk about some numbers, we'll talk about some units, and, you know, the types of questions that you're going to get, okay? So that's our introduction.